Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Charlatan Blues Fest 2013 wrap up. My name is Callum Slingerland, and I will be your host for the duration of this audio slideshow where we will be talking about all things RBC Royal Bank Blues Fest. Blues Fest is an outdoor music festival that has taken place each year in the downtown area of the city of Ottawa since 1994. It has mainly been focused on blues since its inception but has largely started to showcase other sorts of artists within other genres. And since it's gotten bigger in recent years, right now it is the largest blues festival in Canada and the second largest blues festival in the entire continent of North America. Now, I felt that this year was a particularly pivotal year for Blues Fest, in large part because of what we were given for a lineup last year. Last year, the theme for Blues Fest was Electrofied, and as that name implies, a large portion of the lineup and its headliners were dominated by electronic music acts. We had world-renowned DJs such as Tiesto and Skrillex and Afrojack come in, along with a battery of other acts with electronic music influences such as LMFAO, for example. And a lot of longtime festival goers were really put off by this. They did not enjoy the blues being almost completely wiped out from Blues Fest, and they were quick to voice their displeasure at the end of last year's festival. This year, it seems that festival director Mark Monahan, keep in mind, he's the man who's been running this thing since its humble beginnings in 1994, he was really quick to give the people what they wanted this year. And that resulted in the 2013 lineup, which was one that I feel the majority of people were satisfied with at the end of the day. And if you take one quick look at it, there's all sorts of highlights one can pick out from a lineup such as this, and I'll go over a few that I found really interesting now. We can start by taking a look at the big Saturday triple bill that included Mickey Blanco, Death Grips, and Bjork taking over the festival's main stage. Mickey Blanco was dressed in a pair of silk boxer shorts, also donning a pair of pasties, and wearing what I think was a hairpiece. It wasn't the best rap performance I had seen at the festival thus far, but the man is an entertainer. Death Grips was the second act on this triple bill that I never dreamed of seeing in Ottawa. I love them for their unique brand of visceral grinding hip-hop, which is heavy on the electronics. There's also a real hardcore punk element involved as well. Hearing them on a recording is quite an experience in and of itself. It's definitely an acquired taste, but hearing their sound pump through a festival sound system is just a completely different experience. It rocked me to my core. A few more bands in the rock vein of things that would have to be rare acts in my books would be Flogging Molly. It was quite excellent to see them pull through the festival. The other one was Alice in Chains. Would have never thought they would come to Ottawa having skipped over us on their last tour. Wu-Tang Clan, another act on that rare act list that a lot of hip-hop fans in attendance at Blues Fest were happy to cross off their hip-hop bucket list, I'm sure. And of course, the final act that I would peg as a rare act, B.B. King, blues legend. The man is 87 years old, so obviously his playing is not what it used to be, but still, the fact that I was able to see this man live in person is something I will never forget. There was also a huge Canadian rock and roll movement present at the festival this year. This was largely evidenced through bands like Rush and the Tragically Hip. You basically have the nice one-two punch of successful Canadian rock bands there. There was also a decidedly more Canadian flavor to the electronic acts this year as well. Keys and Crates, a three-piece group from Toronto, making beats live right before your eyes in large part due to their live drummer and turntablist, which was very cool to watch. Toronto production duo Zed's Dead was also in attendance. And you also had Ottawa's own A Tribe Called Red in there too. And keeping with that Ottawa theme, there was also more of a local flavor this year too. Hometown acts like Autumn's Cannon up on stage there doing what they do. And City Fidelia was holding up the hip-hop end of things. Another young rising rapper from the city of Ottawa whose hip-hop scene is definitely not one you should overlook. Now is the time of this audio slideshow where I will run through three of the favorite acts that I happen to see at Blues Fest 2013 this year. These are in no apparent order whatsoever. Number one, we'll get going with Death Grips here. The power and energy from this show was huge. As I said, seeing them play on a main stage and having their sound pumped through the sound system that this stage had was unbelievable. You could feel it shaking and rocking your soul. Amazingly enough, my hearing managed to get away unscathed, 
Second favorite of mine, Rush. It is great to see them at this age still playing the songs that they do. The string section that they brought out for the Clockwork Angels section of the concert made everything sound a little bit more interesting. Great move by the band to bring them on tour. And the fact that I was in the first few rows of the standing room only to watch this incredible Canadian band do their thing just made the experience that much better. And my final favorite act for Blues Fest 2013 is one that I didn't even talk about throughout this audio slideshow, and that would be Bjork. The musical and visual experience for this show was excellent in every sense of the word. She brought an entire choir with her from Iceland to back her up on almost every song. She brought a Tesla coil with her on stage. There's an entire science behind this in using electrical currents to produce tones and use them in music, which I won't get into right now. But perhaps if you go look up some YouTube footage from the most recent tour, you'll get what I'm saying about that. It was incredibly incredibly cool to watch her put that into practice in her music and she's another rare addition to the blues fest lineup how often does bjork tour canada let alone ottawa it's very rare that you would get to see her in a festival setting like that around these parts so i was quite happy to check her off my concert bucket list as well and that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the close of the Charlatans 2013 RBC Blues Fest wrap-up. For the Charlatan, this is Callum Slingerland. See ya.